Hey guys, welcome to the final tutorial in the cut page series. We're going to be looking mostly at manipulating clips in the timeline, in the lower timeline down below. Um, and then there's a bunch of tips and tricks kind of sprinkled in. Um, so let's get right to it. So first, we just want to take, uh, I, have, I have a number of clips here. This one's set up here with a, with a fairly short uh, in and out point set. So it's a pretty brief clip, so we can just drag it down to the timeline. That's about three seconds long. And one thing that I want to, to mention first here is this is on track one by default, of course. So if I were to come and grab this track anywhere other than um, some of the icons here that we're going to be talking about, but just sort of in, you know, so, somewhere in the middle of the clip, I can click it, I can drag it. If I drag this out to the right, as soon as I release the mouse button, that's going to snap back to the start. So there's no gap that's going to be created. So that's just one of the properties of the of, of, of track one specifically in the cut page. Um, I'm going to add another clip in beside here. Same thing, when I click and when I drag that out, it just snaps right back into place. Now I'm going to duplicate these clips on track two. I'll snug that one in tight there, bring this one down here. When I do the same thing on track two, no problem. I can move these anywhere I want. So the purpose really of track one is sort of your A roll. That's your main track. It's going to try to reduce any gaps as best as possible. Whereas tracks two and above, you can manipulate things however you, you really want. I'm just going to get rid of track two here. If you really did want to add a gap in between these two clips here, you could just run over to the edit page real quick. You can drag on track one, no problem. Then if you come back into the cut page, it's created sort of a, a dummy clip in between here, which is just essentially a bunch of black frames. I'm going to get rid of that dummy clip, and you'll notice because it's track one, things snap into place. If I were to do that same type of operation on track two, nothing would snap into place. That gap would, would, would remain. There's another thing that I can do that I don't know how useful it is, but I just found it sort of an interesting little, 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 little trick. Um, you'll notice here this light gray area is sort of your end of, up to the end of your clip, whereas this dark gray area extends beyond your clip. What you can do is you can actually grab a clip here and you can drag it out into this kind of beyond area. And when you release, a little dummy clip is going to be created. So the size of this dummy clip really corresponds to how far you drag this clip outside into no man's land over here. So I'm going to get rid of this dummy clip. Things cinch up as the gap is removed. I grab this clip, I drag it out just a little bit. So just that little tiny sliver between the end of my current video and where the left side of that clip out in no man's land is. And then it creates a gap proportional to that size that was over here. Okay, we're just going to clean up this little dummy clip. One of the things that uh, I hadn't mentioned before is you can set colors to each of these clips to help organize things. So say, for example, I had a number of these, you know, insert this beach clip. So I have a beach clip, and then I have this record clip and this uh, surf clip over here. So if I wanted to organize these in terms of colors, I can right I can right click on any clip, clip color, and I can pick any color I want. So I'll set this to uh, teal. So you can see the teal outline here, and also up in this upper timeline, you can see the teal color show up there as well. I can also come up to my clips up top here, and I can assign colors. In the, in the media pool. So I right click on this, clip color. So this one's sand, so I'll change that to beige. And you'll see that little beige circle shows up here. When I drag this down into the timeline, you'll see it shows up as beige up here and beige down here. So that's a really handy way to quickly organize your clips into different, uh, whatever different categories you'd like. So one thing to note about the colors is when I assigned a color down below, it did not apply to the clips up top. When I applied the color to a clip in the media pool, when I dragged it down, that beige color applied. So that's sort of how it works. So if I wanted to, um, again up here, take my water clips, right click, I'm going to assign this teal up here, and you'll notice that changes all the clips down below to that. And I'm going to, this, this one's already teal below, but it's not set to teal up here. So I'm going to change the color there, and now we see those show up there. If I'm looking in uh, list view, and I were to scroll over to the right, clip color is one of the things that I can take a look at and, and sort on. So that's another handy way to, to organize things.
Okay, I'm gonna clean up these clips a little bit and we're gonna bring in just a very simple clip here. But before I bring this in, let's bring this clip over to uh, the viewer. So this clip here, I have an in and out point set to about two seconds, but the total clip is about eight seconds. So I'm gonna bring this clip down to the bottom here. So when we move our mouse over this clip, you'll notice this icon shows up in the middle and this is the slip icon. What that means is when we click on that, I'm gonna click on that and hold my left mouse button down. And you'll see that that white, uh, large white rectangle is superimposed on top of it. And that white rectangle represents the entire length of the clip. So since I'm still holding my mouse button down, I can drag this clip left and right to kind of slip the clip uh, under that window. So that's a very handy way to do some small adjustments without changing the overall length of the clip. So I'm going to bring another clip down and put that beside here. Now I'm going to do what's called a roll, a rolling edit. So first, when I click on the slip icon, I want you to notice that white rectangle as it sort of drags, drags around. And if you look at the right side of that white rectangle where it is on that record clip, let's just keep an eye on that for a second. So to do a rolling edit between two clips, what I will do is I'll move to, to, until you see an icon that looks like this. Left click and I'm gonna hold. And now you see that white rectangle um, is, is exposed below. And if you look at the right side of that rectangle, that shows up to where the end of my first clip of the, surf, uh, the surfing guy. Now a roll edit's really best seen visually rather than me talking over it. So let me just move left and right and I'll show you what it does. So simple as that. So if we go to the edge of this rectangle, that's really saying, oh, our surf clip, we ran out of room. And you can see that that red border has popped up there. So if I wanted to, to roll a little bit further, so I can kind of come back to here, I can come back to this guy here and I can slip this way or this way. But let's say if I slip more this way, and now when I do a roll, I can roll right to the end of that clip if, if I want. So one thing, one thing you might have noticed is when I click in between these two clips, keep your focus on the viewer. It changes from this one-up display to when I click on that to this two-up display. And this is just another way to manipulate that roll. So to manipulate the roll from up here, I would grab this middle bar here and I can swing back and forth. And if you look at the timeline down below, we're getting the same effect that we saw before. And when I click anywhere outside of this transition here, you'll notice this viewer is going to jump back to its one-up display. So we've done slips, we've done rolls, we can also do trims. So you'll notice when I'm right directly between two clips, we see the roll icon, but if I'm off just a little bit to the left or the right, that'll change to the trim icon. So the trim icon is a little bit context sensitive in, in terms of where, if we're at the start of the clip or the end of the clip. So if I'm on the left side of the clip and I do a trim, I'm going to hold my left mouse button down, and again you see the white rectangle representing the entire length of the clip. When I pull this to the right, I'm kind of eating off from the front of the clip. And I can also push that out to the left and I'm adding more to the clip. And because we're on track one here, everything to the right of that sort of scales and, and, and stays into and snaps into place. If I come over to the right side and trim this clip, I'm essentially pulling that clip from the right in or pushing that clip out. And again, I can only go so far. Right here, you can see that I'm hitting the edge of my surfer clip. So in the same way that this viewer changed to this two-up display when we were doing our rolls, we can also use these two handles here, this one here and this one here, to do trims as well. So the advantage of this display up here is because you're seeing things on a frame by frame basis on these two strips here, you can really dial in exactly how you want to do your edits. So keep in mind of the two timelines, most of the manipulation we've been doing is on this lower timeline. You can also do some of the stuff on this upper timeline here. So I can do, there's my uh, trim icon. So I can do trims from here. I can do rolls from here. 
I cannot do slips from up here though. I will have to come down here and do a slip this way. Now say I wanted to switch the order of these two clips. I can take this clip on the right, click and hold, drag over, and I have to drag over pretty far and until you can kind of see it snap into place. When I release the mouse button, there we, we go, we switch the two clips. Same thing if I wanted to go to this other side, switch the two clips. What I can also do if I want to, I don't want to switch the two clips, but I want to take this clip and I want to intersect it in between this clip here. I can click, I can drag somewhere in between. I'm just going to hold my mouse button down for a second and you can kind of see where it's going to go. I release the mouse button. So what it's done, it's split this first clip up into two and put this other clip directly in the middle. Just gonna do an undo. And again, that's something you can do from up here. I click, I hold, I drag. Just gotta wait a second or two until you can sort of see that clip visually where it's gonna snap into place. I release, same effect. So we talked earlier about setting in and out points up in the viewer. You can also set in and out points down on the timeline. So I can move the playhead over here click I, that's going to set my endpoint. slide over here, hit O, that's going to set my out point. So you can see in this timeline here and timeline up here as well where I've selected my in and out points for this clip. If I want to do a delete, if I, or if I press the delete key now, that section is going to be deleted. So I'm just going to do an undo so we can see that again. So this section here is going to be deleted and we're going to be left with two clips, one over here and one over here. And the gap in the middle, because we're on track one, is gonna be cinched up. Delete key, there we go. There's our two, clip one, clip two. You can also do multiple clip slip edits. So if I wanted to do that, I would select this one. Or I can just drag over and select both of them. Then when I grab this slip icon, both of those clips will slip. So again, if I want to grab this one and this one over here, oops. So this one here and this one here by control clicking, I can do slips on whatever clips that I have selected. I can also use your standard cut, copy and paste commands with controller commands C, X and, and V. So I'm going to do, if I select this clip here, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to do a control C for copy. I move the playhead over here. Now when I do a control V, it's going to slice this clip up into two and paste this one, a copy of this one, in the middle. Here we go, control V, boom. If I didn't like that, I can come over here and instead of control C for copy, I can do control X for a cut and that's removed the clip in the middle. Okay, I'm going to clean these up a little bit and we're going to bring in fresh clip here. Now if I want to split this clip, clip up in two, I can do this in a number of ways. I can right click and split. That'll split it in two. I'll do an undo. I can get these little scissors over here. That'll do a split there. I can right click on this playhead. Do it that way. I can come up to this timeline and there's a razor and a split clips. Um, I, I've taken a look at this. To me, these are the same thing. There might be a subtlety there that I'm missing, so please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but right now it looks like these two do the same thing. I can also do a control B or command B. Now if I want to join these two clips back together, select those two clips, come up to timeline, join clips, and they're joined back together. That join clips will only work on something that comes from the same sort of source clip. So for example, if I were to drag this record down here and put it beside and I were to select these two clips here and I come up and I try to do a join, I'm not going to be able to join those two clips together. So they have to be from the same original clip. So guys, I guess I lied a little bit earlier. I thought this was going to be the last series, but I still haven't covered transitions. I haven't covered titles. I haven't covered effects. Um, so I think all of those things together are worthy of one more uh, video after this. So I'm going to call it quits for now, but before, uh, before I go, on, in part three, if you watch that, I was talking about this tools menu. So if I select a clip here, I come to the tools menu, I come to the speed control, where this control is responsible for slowing down or speeding up the clip. 
what I was what I was commenting on is in the manual I saw a bunch of extra controls that didn't seem to show up on my interface. I did get a pretty quick response back from Black Magic, and what they told me was in version 16 of DaVinci Resolve those options were available. That was the version of the manual that that, that I had, version 16. Uh, now that we're we're up to 16.1, for whatever reason, those extra controls were removed. I assume they weren't working properly. In any case, that's all I got for today, guys. We'll see you next video. Bye.